All right, we're almost ready to start drawing normals. We just got to make sure we can set up uh, 3D and make sure we can get some maps baked off of it. That'll help in the future, too. It's a pretty drawn out process, but I'm showing you all the steps that will make a really good product in the end. We just got to do a lot of prep for it. All right, so our first step we're going to do is we're going to click our three icon up here with our Quixel menu here. So we'll click the three. It'll initialize its uh, its protocols or whatever, whatever code's behind running it. And then you might get a big old screen like this. Hopefully it doesn't bug out on me. All right, so if your screen's too big, it's kind of a pain to resize. It doesn't really show you resize arrows. Just click that corner and just trust in it that you can resize. And I'm going to try to bring this uh, into frame here and stick it somewhere. Oh, now we get our resize arrows. All right, great. So, something weird's going on here, though. Our UVs are making this look dumb. So, let's hide our layers over here. All right. And then let's, uh, we made changes to what we're outputting. See, so we can see our UVs uh, coming through onto our normal map. So, you know, you may need to, uh, if you want to preview your model, make sure that your UVs and all your mask layers are turned off. All right. And just have your normal group showing. So I'm going to delete that and put that in there. And let's clean this up a little bit. All right. Um, so how to get this 3D updated now that we've made some changes? Well, we just click our little refresh button here. And now we get a nice looking uh, uh, example of our model with our normal map applied. You can see that detail in those guns right there. All right, great. So I want to make this a little bit bigger for right now because I'm going to do some simple uh, setup for 3D to be able to present our work as good as possible. All right, so we learned how we can resize the window. Let's look at our post-process settings up here in the top left, okay? So let's click on a little drop-down menu. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to screen space, ambient occlusion. You can already notice that our model gets some nice chunky shadows inside the vent area right there. Um, but let's turn them down just a little bit. You tweak it to how you like it, but you don't want it to uh, overpower your detail. You want to be able to see what's going on here. All right, so we can tweak the radius. All right, I just want to get a little bit going on, just a little bit of color bleed. All right, so we got screen space aiming occlusion turned on. So let's next go to uh, optical vignetting. So we select our little, uh, let me just maximize this window real quick. All right. Simulate physical camera is what we need to turn on right here. So let's turn on simulate physical camera. All right. We want to turn off chromatic aberration because it shifts our color a little bit. And we want to turn on optical vignetting for sure. And then let's scale it up and uh, adjust, pull back the intensity. That way we get a nice gradient when we're looking at our model in 3D. It's not just this oppressive gray background. It'll help our model pop a little bit more right here. Um, if you want to uh, rotate the model, just hold down Alt and use basic Maya rotation. So my, uh, Alt, left click is rotate, right click, zoom. Middle mouse click is pan, nothing crazy there. Um, you can get a light to spin around it so you can see how your normal details react to light going on. So that's pretty cool. So you notice how our normal maps, let's look at our front of our gun. See how our normal maps are working for us? It's really following the origin of our light there. If you want to, uh, to uh, move the light manually, just hold down shift and right click so you can hold down and change the light like that all right so you know that's how we can get some different light going on so you can ch manually check different areas of your model so they're not always in shadow uh we can even change kind of the light source so right up here we have a, a drop down and we have different kind of settings um Right here, you can see that we have kind of a warm light hitting it. Um, that's not too bad for uh, making normals. But you may want to pick more, a more neutral color 
uh, whenever you're doing Hindu stuff. So, you know, that's still kind of warm. That's kind of dark, deep. That's not, that's not too bad. That's kind of blue. So it's really up to you. And you can increase the ambient occlusion or the skybox exposure. So, you know, you can keep that first one and kind of tone down that warm light or select this other one and kind of tone that blue light down. But yet we can turn on our light. So it's up to you on how you kind of want to uh, sh change your uh, uh, light settings for. If you press F, it recenters the model in the middle of your screen here. Um, as far as everything else, uh, I don't think we want to cover too much here. Um, but before we leave this, why don't we uh, look at how we can bake an ambient occlusion model. I know uh, we have it kind of shown in our post-processing here, but we'll notice that our ambient occlusion only shows up when we have two surfaces kind of intersecting together, and it kind of makes it believable that they're kind of welded together rather than just intersecting and floating. So we kind of want to have that detail carry on through maybe into our texture map. So what we can do is uh, I'm going to turn post-process off real quick, and we're going to bake this normal map into a texture file that we can add later into Unity. So let's go to baking. All right. Let's click the little white spear here, the very first little white spear. Um, these other maps could be useful in uh, DDo later on. And uh, when we set up for DDo, we might come back and bake these maps out. But for right now, I just definitely want to introduce us to how DDo can, uh, 3DO can bake for us. So we'll click the little first little white guy right there. And you can see it gives us some really subtle shadowing where uh, our intersecting models are. So it makes it look a little bit like it wasn't just intersected together. All right. That's pretty good. Great. All right. Um, and then if we want to save it. Then we can just uh, click save right here, and it should default to the resolution that your uh, that your basic project's in, and it creates a map uh, with an underscore of AO, and it creates a new folder for you inside your Quixel project called Bakes. So that'll be fine. So we can save it. Now we have in our Quixel project a previewer folder and a Bakes folder. And now we have the beginnings of a nice AO map we can use and which we'll add to uh, later on in the future. All right. So if we go back to uh, options here and turn on our post processing, we can see that, uh, you know, we're ready to start uh, actually making some normal maps now. All right. So uh, I would recommend keeping this on your second monitor so your uh, project isn't disturbed and I'll see you in the next video.